I knew she was going to dance. I knew it. Good morning to you. Thanks for waking up with us here on Fox 28 Morning Live. I'm Janae Ryan. This is Rebecca Copeland, and she literally like braced herself to dance. She's like, what's the song going to be? Ready to dance. It's a good dancing song. It's a good dancing song. I mean, it gets your feet moving. And we have reason to dance today because not a goodbye rain. Dance. rain. It's, yeah. a, it's, <laughs> not, it's not a rain dance. It's a the sun is coming dance today. Yes. Yes. And we're going to see clearing skies. We are starting off with a little fog and a little mm -hmm. leftover moisture and some clouds. But otherwise, you can start to see the sun peeking through there a little bit. We had an inch to two inches of rain yesterday across the area. Had some heavy rain at times. Now at least we're drying out as we head into this weekend. 54 degrees right now in Cedar Rapids. And uh, we are starting the, the airports reporting clear skies there. They may see a peak of sunshine when they got that last observation. We, are, we do have a little bit of fog though out there. We're starting to see improvements in north of Highway 20 where earlier this morning they had some reduced visibility. Now it is getting a little better out there and may just run into a little bit of patchy fog as you head out the door. Temperatures right now starting off close to 54 in Cedar Rapids, 49 in Waterloo. 58 Iowa City, 57 down in Washington, and 51 in Tama. As we head through this morning, temperatures are going to be rising through the 50s, close to 60 by noontime, and into the mid to upper 60s by this afternoon and evening. And then we will start to see partly cloudy skies as we get into late, the later part of the day and some improvements out there as we get into this weekend. Tomorrow going to be a nice day. This weekend going to be even nicer. If you have any plans with mom or you just you know want to hang out this weekend outside, do it. 76 on Saturday, 79 on Sunday. Going to be gorgeous. And then this is just the beginning of a warm up. We have 80s on the way. We'll talk about when the 80s arrive and how long they'll be with us in just a bit. For now, let's take a look out on the road, see how things are moving along this morning. And here's a look at I-380 at 76th Avenue. And you can still see some fog hanging out there, but that fog should be lifting within the next hour. And otherwise, uh, everybody's just uh, moving along pretty nicely there. Down further to the south, I-380 at I-80 at the interchange there, Coralville, Tiffin, Iowa City. No problemos happening there. We do have uh, down in Iowa City, may see some uh, traffic issues as you get into the later part of the day. They're starting their graduation ceremonies uh, today through this weekend, so be aware of that. Otherwise, smooth sailing this morning. Janae? Thanks, Rebecca. 702 now. New this morning, a Cedar Rapids woman faces charges after leading police on a chase through three cities. Just after 11 last night, officers say they noticed a car that was listed as stolen driving in Marion. When they tried to stop that car, the driver, 37-year-old Kristen Campbell Martin, refused to stop. Instead, she drove up to Boysen Road, over to Interstate 380, and drove onto the off-ramp of that highway. She was traveling south in the northbound lanes, so police blocked off traffic while they tried to stop her. Eventually, they were able to force her into a median and arrest her. She now faces several charges. A former Marion High student learns his fate later this morning. The 15-year-old was convicted of sexually abusing three kindergartner students in a class where he volunteered. The students all attended Starry Elementary, and parents of two of the victims are now suing that school district. They claim the teen should have never been left alone with the children. Today, the student will be sentenced in Lynn County. CBS 2 has chosen not to name the suspect because of his young age and the fact he was convicted in juvenile court. The fallout in Washington continues this morning over the firing of FBI Director James Comey. Now today, his temporary replacement, Andrew McKay, plans to testify before a Senate committee in his place. Now, Comey could still testify himself before the Senate panel. They invited him to speak next week. President Trump fired Director Comey on Tuesday. He sent his former colleagues a farewell message just released last night, encouraging all federal agents to go on their mission. The White House continues to defend the president's decision. The simple fact is, Director Comey had lost the confidence of the American people. Frankly, he'd been considering letting Director Comey go since the day he was elected. Democrats in Washington maintain the firing was all a cover-up, pointing to reports that Comey recently asked for more resources from the Justice Department to help the FBI's probe on possible collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. Iowa's lone Democratic voice in Washington is among those who aren't happy with this firing. Congressman Dave Loebsack, who represents Southeast Iowa, including Iowa City, said on Twitter President Trump abused his power. Now Loebsack is joining his voice with the many calls coming from Democrats that the Russian investigation in the FBI needs an independent prosecutor. 
Senator Chuck Grassley heads the Senate Judiciary Committee, and we spoke to him about Comey's firing. And although he supports the president's decision, he told us he would have handled it differently. I think a person should uh, at least get a phone call, but a personal uh, uh, administering of the, of the decision would be best, face-to-face, -face, but without a face-to-face, -face, at least by a phone call. But Grassley also told Fox and Friends those protesting the decision need to suck it up and move on. The former national security advisor for President Trump has now been subpoenaed by a Senate panel investigating the Russian interference into the election as well. Fox 28 News reporter Stephanie Johnson has been tracking this story. Stephanie, what's the latest? Yeah, today, Senate members say the subpoena was necessary because Michael Flynn refused to hand over documents to the Intelligence Committee. Flynn is part of a large investigation and concerning Russia's meddling in the 2016 presidential election. Now, President Trump fired Flynn after he misled Vice President Mike Pence about interactions he had with Russia's ambassador. Now, the subpoenas are seen as a significant move in the investigation initially launched by the FBI back in July. And that's the latest from the breaking news desk. Stephanie Johnson, Fox 28 News. Back here in Iowa, Congressman Rod Blum continues his tour in the eastern part of the state. Last night, he held a contentious town hall, and it was in Cedar Falls. Blum was asked by one constituent if he would support an independent investigation into Russia. The congressman didn't provide an answer to that question. Many questions centered around his support of the Republican plan to repeal and replace Obamacare, though. Blum voted in favor of that plan last week and explained last night why he believes most major medical groups oppose the Republican health care plan. A lot of times there's hidden agendas. A lot of times the American Hospital Association might, might be against something if they think they're going to make less money. Those big, those big corporate hospitals that no one likes. There's always agendas. There's always agendas. Sell them as it what it seems. Congressman Blum has one more town hall later today at noon at Marshalltown Community College. An Iowa City minister is now in hot water with her congregation this morning. She's now facing disciplinary action from the United Methodist Church after officiating a same-sex wedding. CBS 2 News reporter Mitch Fix sat down with the minister who says she's fighting for her faith. Anna Bladel's fight with the United Methodist Church dates back to last summer. The annual conference happened, which is the statewide gathering of United Methodists. I made a three-minute speech um, on the floor of annual conference and came out. The Iowa conference filed a complaint against Bladel after that speech, citing the church's incompatibility clause. It says that the practice of homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching. I believe that clause is in and of itself incompatible with Christian teaching. That complaint was dismissed, but now they filed a second after Bladel officiated a same-sex wedding in Oklahoma last month for one of her close friends. Kayla and Dana invited me to officiate their wedding. I said yes. The complaint itself is confidential, but the UMC gave us this letter that was sent out to clergy across the area. In it, they say that paragraph 2072.1.B of the church's Book of Discipline prohibits, quote, conducting ceremonies which celebrate homosexual unions or performing same-sex wedding ceremonies. Bladel says she knew the risk and doesn't regret it. I knew that a complaint could cost me my clergy credentials, uh, my job, my employment, my income, my health insurance, um, and my place of spiritual belonging. But I knew that um, saying no because of fear and self-protection would cost me my integrity. Wesley Center's board of directors released a statement last week in support of her. She has another hearing in Des Moines Monday. New this morning, an unusual Iowa case has come back with a guilty verdict. Now, even though Cora Konsky's body's never been found, her former boyfriend's now been found guilty of her murder. Tate Pert claims back in 2000, Konsky left home for the store to buy cigarettes and just never came back. Prosecutors disagree, saying Perk actually killed her and buried her body. His defense claims there's no evidence she's dead. But a former inmate who served time with Perk testified that Perk confessed to the killing. Perk now faces life in prison without the possibility of parole. 
An Iowa man now admits to scamming elderly people out of their money. 37-year-old Carlos Rodriguez of Dubuque pleaded guilty to wire fraud. During a hearing this week, Rodriguez said another con artist would call an elderly person and tell them a relative was in jail. That caller would then ask them to wire money to pay for the release of that relative. And Rodriguez was the one to go pick up the wired money from the people. The scam victimized people in at least 30 states. Now, we want to make sure you and your family aren't targeted by criminals. We've partnered with Alert ID so you can track crime in your neighborhood. It's free to sign up. You just go under our news tab at cbs2iowa.com or fox28iowa.com and click on Crime Map and type in an address and it'll pop up to show you all the crimes in that area. In Johnson County, North Liberty is expanding at a massive rate, as you've known if you've gone through it at all recently. But now the police department is asking for help to keep up with all of that. It's hoping the community will support an effort to build a new police headquarters. CBS 2 News reporter Matt Hamill got an inside look at the department's struggles. So this actually started out as a farmhouse. You heard right. Police headquarters for the fastest growing community in Iowa is a renovated farmhouse. This was just supposed to be a temporary fix. Chief Diane Venenga says that was seven years ago. And from the front desk to the offices that double as storage lockers, 22 officers are working on top of each other. At least three to a room amid extra equipment, bulletproof vests and jackets. Space, of course, is of our utmost importance. We just don't have that. The tiny interview room, complete with a hole from someone's fist, means people involved in the same crime waiting outside can hear every word, and a window means it's not secure. Men and women officers share a cramped locker room with no showers and often end up changing clothes in the hall. Even the break room is used for equipment storage. Down the stairs, police bikes share space with basement evidence storage. Smaller than most people's laundry rooms, the close quarters means it reeks of pot and during a heavy rain doesn't always stay dry. Make sure that they're stored properly uh, and again, keeping things off of the floor. Um, because of the flooding. Correct. The concept for a new police station right across the street could have a price tag of four to five million dollars. Now it relies on support from the council and the community. I would expect a new facility would address those space concerns for today and then also for the next 20, 30 years as this department continues to grow. That was Matt Hamill reporting. The chief says she'd be happy to give anyone a tour to show them all the changes firsthand. About 50 people have already taken her up on that offer. If you'd like to, just give them a call. Meanwhile, in two weeks, the city council will hold a public hearing to talk about how a new police station like that might be funded. And Iowan now leads the National Rifle Association. Brownell CEO Pete Brownell has been elected the new board president. According to the NRA, he's contributed up to a million dollars to that company between 2005 and 2010. Brownell's company is based in Montezuma, Iowa. It sells firearms and shooting accessories. His grandfather opened it back in 1939. It is now about 7.13 or so. Let's take a look what we've got going on for the rest of the show. At 7.23, it's time to get it growing. It's almost Mother's Day, and it means a trip to the florist. What to get your mom to win you some major points this year. Then at 7.30, Petland. Ron joins us with how we can keep our pets from getting stressed. They get stressed just like us. Then at 7.39, it's time for a weekend wind down. And I'm watching this big area of swirling weather, and that is going to be contributing to warm weather for us. I'll tell you how and just how warm it gets in your weather first forecast after this. Good morning. It is, if I can figure out the time, 7.16 right now, and uh, we are going to be heading towards some really, really nice weather as we get into this weekend, and especially next week. Right now, we do have a little bit of fog still out there. We have some clouds in the skies, 54 degrees right now, light north winds. We're going to have a little bit of a light breeze out of the north throughout the day today, and we also do have a little bit of that leftover moisture leading to some fog, really not impacting the uh, visibilities all that much 
earlier this morning it was a bit dense to the north of Highway 20, but right now we are starting to see some improvements in terms of the fog. Temperatures are starting off in the 50s across the area where there was some clear skies earlier and uh, there were there was some clearing of the skies. Temperatures are closer to the 50 degree mark right now. Everybody's going to be warming up as we get through the day and we are going to see some clearing skies throughout the entirety of the afternoon. For right now, we do still have some clouds out there. We're starting to see some thin out a bit and as we get into the afternoon, we'll see partly cloudy skies. Temperatures rising close to 60 by noontime, mid to upper 60s for highs later on today and then we'll keep the mostly clear to partly cloudy skies as we get through the night tonight. Then sunshine returns and temperatures really start to warm up and we even have a taste of summer on the way. Today, temperatures are pretty close to normal, pretty seasonal values. As we get into the rest of the week and into this weekend, temperatures are going to be in the 70s Friday, Saturday and Sunday and will be above normal over the next couple of days here. And as we get into next week, we'll likely have at least three days in the 80s and it will be the warmest stretch of time that we've had so far this year with 82 Monday, 84 Tuesday and 84 on Wednesday with temperatures 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Now, you've probably all been waiting to talk about the big giant swirly thing that's going on and why that has anything to do with us. Well, this low pressure system up here is going to settle in in the northwestern United States and that is actually going to contribute to our weather because as it sets up over there, it's going to force an area of high pressure to move out of the southwestern United States and move into the central United States as this area of low pressure kind of hangs out. That's going to force this warm air to move in overhead and that's going to lead to southerly flow. So that's going to pump in some warm air, a little bit of moisture. So it may feel a little humid at times as we get through the week. And then we will be staying mostly dry because it is high pressure. But because we have that moisture, we may see a chance for for rain as we get into next week, but otherwise should be some pretty calm weather and a really nice preview of summer because, uh, well, we've kind of had some ups and downs here in terms of our temperatures. We're going towards the up here in the next couple of days, close to 70 today, low 70s tomorrow, 76 for Saturday, Mother's Day, beautiful Mother's Day weekend, outdoor plans, a total green light there. And then as we get into next week, the 80s once again for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, slight chance for a shower or storm on Tuesday afternoon. So it's nice weather on the way for right now. Let's see how it's moving out there on the roads. And uh, we are taking a look at I-380 and 8th Street Northeast, and you can still see some fog and some gray skies out there, but no issues that way. If that's where you're happen you happen to be heading, everything seems to be moving along just fine. Further to the north and west, up near Waterloo, Cedar Falls area, Highway 218, Highway 20, and down I-380. No issues have been reported this morning, all in the green currently, so should be pretty smooth sailing if you're thinking to hit the roads this morning. Janae? 7.19. Now, thank you, Rebecca. Still coming up when we come back. Why right now is the perfect time to start renovating your lawn. Seven twenty-two on Fox 28 Morning Live. It is time for Get It Growing. We've got Jeff here from Quality Care. And it, this weekend, obviously, we've been talking about it. Mother's Day, big day for you guys. It is. Because mm -hmm. that is when everyone wants to buy flowers and plants and all sorts of right, stuff. Right, right. And we can't forget it's Mother's Day, so I mm -hmm. brought the reminder today. So Mother's Day, doing a little research on it, started mm -hmm. in 1908. And carnations have been associated with it pretty much ever since, from the beginning. Yeah, that's really popular for the bouquets, this mm -hmm. giant carnation bouquets. Yep, it's yep. one of the. It's like the Mother's Day flower. It is the Mother's Day flower. Yeah. And over time, uh, and I brought a variety here, the pink and the red have kind of come to represent the flower that you give to the mothers you're with, mm -hmm. um, who you're fortunate enough to, st to still be with. The white carnation has kind of become more of a memorial Mother's Day flower. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yep. different flowers do represent something different. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, the Mother's Day, and it comes to buying flowers, but it's also really important for gardening. This is the day on the gardening calendar that we all wait for because it roughly corresponds to the average date of last frost in our part of the universe. Which is quite um, a while for, yeah, for us. No, it took forever, didn't <laughs> yeah. it? But we kind of associate that with the date when it's safe. Frost is done, they say usually around May 8th in mm -hmm. uh, the Cedar Rapids Hardiness Zone, which is 5A. Okay. Iowa City is 5B, so... 
maybe a day earlier mm -hmm. down there. Mm -hmm. It still can be kind of cool, but that chance of frost and killing the plants you put out has pretty much passed by this point. So this weekend is a decent weekend to be planting your garden if you're not too busy with mom. Yeah. Um, and then what I like to do is wait till maybe Memorial Day for the things that like the hot weather, the tomatoes, okay. the eggplants, the peppers, those kinds so of things. So the less sensitive things, maybe get out this weekend and do it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a wonderful weather weekend That's to right. do it too. Get on some shorts, some t-shirts, get out there, do that work. Of course, make sure you treat mom first. Um, so <laughs> when gardening, but also you were talking a lot about lawn too. Right mm -hmm. now is prime time for lawn. It is. Now, uh, conventional wisdom is that you want to plant a bluegrass lawn or a cool season lawn in the fall to get the best results. However, there are some really good reasons to do it now. The weather does allow us to do it because it's cool. Mm -hmm. We've got abundant moisture, but there are also situations in your lawn that might make you want to do it now. So if you've got bare dirt patches, maybe something died back over the winter, that's gonna be prime breeding ground for weed seeds. So you right. wanna get that covered up. And we've got a window from about mid-April till about mid-June or so where it's really okay to do that. Okay, mm -hmm. and what about caring for that lawn correctly right mm -hmm. now? Once you get it down, so in the absence of rain, rainfall, you'll want to keep that soil really moist right at the surface until germination. Mm -hmm. So a couple times a day, maybe a morning watering, very short just to keep that soil surface wet, and then an evening watering to keep it um, to keep it moist again overnight, twice a day till it germinates, and then we'll want to mimic a half inch to an inch or so of rain during the time period of establishment. So once it comes up out of the ground, if we're not getting rain from Mother Nature, then put a little bit of water on there, let it run a little bit longer, maybe 15 minutes or so, and that'll really help that grow in by the time we get to the hot part of the soil. Summer. So you guys have got to be crazy busy right now we because are. not mm -hmm. only is it Mother's Day and people are picking out flowers, but it's gardening mm -hmm. and lawn time. Yes. Do you have any more tips for people of maybe working with you guys to mm -hmm. get it done? Absolutely. It's a great time to be a grass plant. Um, yeah. <laughs> growing really, really well, as you probably noticed on your own lawn. Um, we say at this time of year, it's okay to mow shorter. And okay. if you have the luxury of being able to mow a couple times a week, this is the time of year to do that. Keep it short. Mm -hmm. Once we get into the cooler part or the warmer part, of the summer our cool season grasses kind of like to go dormant so our lawns will turn a little bit brown that's yeah, okay not so pretty yeah they're, they're sleeping yeah. they're hot um, they're just kind of doing that to conserve moisture and to survive for when it gets cool and wet again in the fall um, at that time of year in the summer when it gets hotter mow a little bit higher I like to tell people don't bag your lawn because you're just bagging up free food that'll oh. break down yeah that'll break down and those nutrients that are in that the water that's in that goes right back into the soil to so feed it leave again it where where you cut it just let it lay that's yep. interesting I haven't heard that mm -hmm. before. If you need any more help on how to care for your lawn, starting your garden for the season, or even Mother's Day, getting some gifts for mom there at Quality Care, there's their website. It's all there, and they're there to help you out in person as well. So check them out. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's mm -hmm. Day to you, and happy Mother's Day to all you moms watching. Hopefully you get some wonderful carnations from your kids. It's 727 now on this Thursday. When we come back, we're going to take a look at doggy stress. Yeah, that's a thing. And we're going to look at how you can determine whether your pup is suffering from stress and how to help them. You ain't nothing but a Welcome back to Fox 28 Morning Live. It is a Puppy Thursday. We've got Ron here from Petland to talk about something that you may not know your pets experience, stress. Yes. We were talking off air a little bit about yeah. stress and I have a story about uh, our little dachshund who's what, 15 years old. Uh -huh. So you'd think, gosh, that dachshund is, you know, Callie is her name, has experienced the world. It's got life down. Yes. <laughs> well, we went on a vacation and we, we normally have people take care of them, you know, friends and all that kind of stuff. Well, we Ooh. ended up, <laughs> are you going anywhere? <laughs> um, but normally uh, we find the friends, but this time we used a kennel, really nice kennel. Uh, when we were there, Callie was jumping around, having, you know, like plating. We joked uh -huh. that it was vacation. Right. Got her back home. And then all of a sudden, that's where the bottom dropped out. She wasn't eating much. She wasn't doing her business outside mm -hmm. all that much. And we were noticing something was wrong. And so we tried a couple of different things. Something that we uh, did was, you know, more appetizing food and all that mm -hmm. kind of a thing. But it didn't work. And bottom line with all of what we're going to talk about today, if it's bigger concerns and it's you're not figuring out go see a veterinarian yeah that's you it. don't want to play with yeah. it yourself right and they've got techniques and things that they can do that we can't do and mm -hmm. it's really good and that's what ended up being Callie's way around it was is all that we were doing was fine we needed that a little bit of extra help from dr uh the the doctor the. uh here mm -hmm. 
So these are uh, some little things, though. Here are some things that you can try at home, and things that we tried as well. <laughs> this one here. Okay, so some other signs of stress. This one's stressed out. <laughs> this one wants to play, so there's no stress oh, here. This okay. one's like going, I want to go. <laughs> uh, so some other things that uh, are going to do it: lack of appetite. Mm -hmm. We talked about a little yep. uh, potty issues and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, if aggression. They're going too much or not at all. Yes, mm -hmm. aggression. That usually means that there's some kind of a. a uh, a sore or something that's hurting them. Aggression tends to go in that way. Oh, okay. A lot of sleeping, just like when we were sick, mm -hmm. we like to sleep a lot. Um, so try to comfort them in what they're looking like they need. But some things to help them out with are quiet moments. Uh, for And these are all for cats and dogs. There's different versions for them. Comfort zones are really good. This is a pheromone that is emitted just I've like... I've heard of that. Just like the mom uh, would do with her litter, she just naturally emits it. Well, this is a synthetic form of it, but it really works. Uh, we use it at our house for when we do go on vacation for a cat mm -hmm. to help that one out. Another one is, uh, have you ever used the Thunder shirt? I was actually talking to a friend about that the other day, how she got one for her dog, and it made the biggest difference. Right. Because dogs get really anxious. I mean, we're in Iowa, so we get thunderstorms all the time. Dogs get yes. really anxious. My cat gets really anxious, too. She's always running around during thunderstorms if I'm not laying right with her. Right, and, yeah. and it uses the same basic tr principle as some a lot of these others is, what do you do with a baby when you're trying to soothe it? You yeah, swaddle you it, it. Yeah. it, yeah, and that's exactly what it does. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, you won't. Is this a girl or a boy? This is a little boy. Little boy. We got okay. two little boys there we today. Go. We didn't even talk about them, but they're Pomeranians. If you're if you're questioning, two little Pomeranians there. So Hi. the Thunder shirt is just like swaddling a mm -hmm. baby in here. We talked about pheromones. Uh, Quiet moments actually has tryptophan and those type so of things. So kind of calms them down. Yeah. Okay. And it, all of these takes them down a notch. Does it put them out? No. It just takes them down a little bit. And I want to address that tryptophan thing because you know it's a big word and it sounds like it's a chemical. It is, but it's a natural chemical. It's like what's found in turkey and stuff. Yes. So don't feel like you're drugging your dog up or right. anything. Right. None of these are that way. In fact, uh, one of the best stories that I have of quiet moments was his a dog in a car, stressful mm -hmm. moment. And the the uh, call I had a person call and say, "Hey, my dog's barking. What do I do?" We quickly got him the quiet moments. He had another 12 hours of driving. He called us back and he said, "Hey, it worked wonderful. He nice. actually he actually fed the whole thing." Not recommended. <laughs> is all he, so, but you can uh, you know dose it up if need be if your uh, dog or cat is not responding. Do you need some help? Yes, <laughs> He's this an one. one. All right, so no stress here. <laughs> no stress here, just lots of love. And then we also have some of those in the collar, the collar form, form now, too. where the scent in the uh, the uh, mel the uh, oh I'm getting the oh, pheromone. Okay, is so in the, the collar pheromone. itself, and so it stays with the dog. There's sprays and all sorts of stuff okay. as well. So obviously, lots of lots of signs of stress. If there's anything you might be worried about, maybe call a vet and ask. You can even call oh. Petland, and maybe they can give you some tips about if that is stress or not, how to deal with it. Obviously, lots of little things you can do at yourself um, through Petland at home with these products. But if there's anything big, make sure you do see a vet about that because you yes. don't want to risk the health for that stress of that pet. But all these things very helpful according to people and i know some people have used some of them too and they are helpful right. and these little babies these little boys if you love them you can go pick them up at petland too get to know them see if they are right to fit for your family it's now 7 35 on this thursday when we come back cedar ridge is counting down the days until they can hand you a glass of bourbon at their distillery the new flavors you'll be able to taste Good morning. It is about 7.37. I'm Rebecca Copeland here with Janae Ryan and... And this little boy, he doesn't have a name yet. <laughs> and a new co-host. He's going to hang out with us. Every time the puppies come through, they just end they up They have to stay with us, with us a little us. longer. Yeah. yeah. He'll end up going back in the uh, control room and everyone there will, will fawn over him too. Yeah. But right he's now, so he's the star. He is the star. <laughs> do you want to do the weather? Here, look at there that. Isn't that great? She's <laughs> like, nope. Uh, we have some clouds out there and a little bit of fog. Not a beautiful looking morning, but it's all right out there. 54 degrees right now in Cedar Rapids, and uh, temperatures are starting off area wide in the 50s. We have the clouds, we have a little bit of fog, and we are going to continue to see a little fog over the next hour or so. Not overly dense, not really causing too many problems, and it's going to continue to move uh, out and lift up over the next really couple of. Uh, 
hours here once again. Temperatures in the 50s area wide close to 50 up in the north where there was some clearing of the skies earlier as we head through the day hour by hour forecast has temperatures close to 60 by noontime mid to upper 60s later on this afternoon and then we uh, will see some clearing skies and some sunshine as we get through the day today after that as we get into this weekend we will have plenty of sunshine temperatures are going to be in the 70s Saturday and Sunday getting close to 80 on Sunday some beautiful weather for Mother's Day weekend and then after that we get even warmer we'll talk about when you could see the 80s in your full forecast coming up in just a bit but for right now let's take a look out there on the roads once again see how things are moving along and here's a look at I-380 and Collins Road northbound and there are plenty of people out there on the roads right now, but seems to be moving along just fine. And uh, on ways, we are looking all the way down the corridor, I-380 and I-80 all in the green. No reports of any accidents or delays this morning. Pretty smooth sailing for your Thursday morning. So really no issues as you are heading out the door. And right now it's time. Uh, what a better time for our weekend wind down with Cedar Ridge. And Jamie is here with us and you've just had a major victory in Des Moines. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. So we've been lobbying for about five years now and um, the bill just got signed uh, this week on Tuesday. So um, we will be starting July 1st, be able to serve um, wine by the glass, yeah. beer, but most importantly, we'll be able to serve our award-winning cocktails and, and spirits. So That's we're, awesome. Yeah, we're, we can't be more excited about yeah, it. Yeah, so previously you had to sell an entire bottle? Yeah, so previously you could come out and you could sample, which you'll still be able to mm -hmm. do, which is really, really important and, yeah. and you know, uh, a big deal for us. Um, and you could buy a bottle to take home with you, but you couldn't have a drink on site. Mm, um, and okay. so we were trying to get an even playing field for all the breweries and wineries um, in the state. Um, and so that's why we've been lobbying to, to have this law passed. And, and now it's it will be, like I said, effect on July 1st. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, what do you have for us here? Yeah, so we have um, a couple new products. Um, this one is our Whiskey Explorer gift pack that um, just we released a small amount last holidays. And it was so popular we wanted to, um, to release a little bit more in 2017. Um, you know, Father's Day is coming up, more importantly, Mother's Day. Yeah, you know. mothers will drink it too. <laughs> Absolutely. <you know? laughs> Graduation, so it's a Absolutely. great present. Um, but it is um, a sample pack of five of all of our whiskeys, mm -hmm. um, all our whiskeys in our family, um, two milliliter bottles, so total is about a, a liter, um, and that retails about um, $69.99. Okay, wow, that's really nice. Yeah. And, uh, and you have, uh, so which, what is this one that you have so, actually here? So, and then here? this one right here, mm. so our flagship product, uh, most know, but you know, it never, get, it never hurts to, to re, um, yeah. you know, retell people, but is our bourbon whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, bourbon, by law, has to be 51% corn or more, brand new barrel okay. in Merritt American soil. So why not make a high quality bourbon in Iowa, right? Exactly. Considering we're yes. the, the corn state. We have the corn. Yeah, absolutely. So, so um, our normal bourbon is aged um, two years and this one is aged five years. Okay. Um, a little bit higher proof. I'm going to check too. it out. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I poured you a glass for. Yeah, awesome. So we did leave it higher proof. Um, and okay. what that does is it adds a little bit more flavor to it. So you got to get past the alcohol because it is a little bit stronger, but yeah. um, it it's not strong. about it's not about the strongness. It's about the the flavors and you know the aromas and everything. So yeah, definitely. And um, I'm 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 a little sick, so this is gonna well, help clear, clear me out, out right? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, definitely. So we age this for five years. Um, that's yeah. why we put reserve bourbon. <laughs> it's a little bit of a strong one there, yeah. but it's it tastes. It tastes really good. It is is pretty smooth though too. Absolutely. Yeah. And we have a very limited supply of this. Um, I think we just bottled uh, about three barrels um, just wow. um, within the last month. Okay. And um, last um, October we won uh, a double gold medal in New York awesome. um, Wine and Spirits competition. So um, yeah, award-winning product. Very very limited supply. So. And is um, it included in the pack? There, um, it is no? not included. So okay. included in the pr pack is our regular bourbon. Okay. But the, r the just because the it's so limited. Bourbon. Um, mm -hmm. We kept that by itself. Okay. So, yeah, th that will be around for um, the next few weeks. Um, awesome. You know, all your local hy vs liquor stores, um, yeah. as well as at Cedar Ridge, you can pick up a bottle. Great. And then uh, we spoke about Mother's Day a little bit, and you guys have an early event going on tonight, right? Yeah. Um, tonight we have, um, what do we have tonight? We have... Um, is it the, oh, is it a gift... Uh, there's a yoga and glass of wine. Tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, no, I apologize. <laughs> I, a lot of other stuff in my mind. Excuse oh, no, me. Um, okay. Yeah, we do um, a yoga, um, a glass, um, 
Yoga by the Glass every every month. Okay. And, um, yeah. and this one is tonight, and it's a great way to come out with friends um, and do a little bit of stretching, mainly uh, mainly drinking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so, but no, you get a glass of wine with it and Loosen some, up some appetizer. And then stretch. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So yeah. um, that's always fun. And then um, we have live music. Um, every Friday year round, and awesome. then we started it last um, last weekend on Sundays. Oh, okay. And so nice. um, we do it Sunday seasonally because it's outdoors. So mm-hmm. it's that's May through October, and um, this weekend we um, our Mother's Day brunch is is sold out on, on okay. Sunday. But we have live music in the afternoon from one to four. So oh, so people you, can still come out. Absolutely, yeah. you can still come out and order pizzas and other um, small plate you know meats and cheeses and, and um, get a bottle of wine and taste yeah. and taste our spirits. Taste. Um, we're taste not everything. quite there, so we can <laughs> serve you a drink yet, but we're getting closer. Yeah, getting close. When do you do you know when that would be? July first. Oh, be July first. Yep. All right. So right in time for summer there. But absolutely. It would be a great time to go out to Cedar Ridge. And uh, where are you guys located? If people want to come out for Mother's Day. We're right off of um, Exit Ten. Um, in Swisher, um, all easy paved roads to get to. So it's exit 10 off of 965 in Swisher. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Jamie, for thank joining you. us. And thank you for waking up with us on this Thursday morning. It is now 744. And after the break, we're going to be talking about when you can see the 80 degree temperatures and some more sunshine right in your forecast after this. Good morning to you, 747 on this Thursday morning, and we do have some clouds out there. We're going to see them thin, kind of just passing through the skies throughout the day today, and otherwise, it's going to be pretty nice out there. Not going to have the rain, and it's going to be a beautiful start to what's going to be a beautiful weekend. Right now, we're starting off close to 50 across the area, down to the south, close to 60 out there, and as we head through the day today, we're going to continue to see skies clear. Temperatures are going to warm close to 60 by noontime, mid to upper 60s as we get into to this afternoon and evening and then we're going to have partly cloudy skies as we get through the night tonight. Temperatures are going to continue to warm though as we head into this weekend. We're going to have 70s tomorrow, mid 70s on Saturday, upper 70s on Sunday where temperatures are going to be well above normal and then as we get into this coming week, temperatures are actually going to be in the 80s and they'll likely be in the 80s for several days, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And you can thank a big area of low pressure that is hanging out in the northwestern portion of the United States in the Pacific right now. What that is going to do is settle in over the Pacific Northwest. That's going to send an area of high pressure in overhead and that thing is going to hang out. It's going to lead to dry conditions, warm conditions, southerly flow, some uh, warm, moist air going to move in and that is going to lead to some summer like conditions as we get into next week so some really nice weather is on the way and we're already going to start off with some nice weather across uh, the area for this weekend for Mother's Day really just going to be beautiful for today we're going to have a few clouds out there clearing skies highs in the mid to upper 60s low 70s tomorrow mid 70s Saturday with that sunshine sticking around all the way through the weekend including Mother's Day with a high close to 80 degrees already there and then as we get into next week 82 84 84 Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, slight chance for a shower on Tuesday, but otherwise we are staying dry. Very, very, very nice weather and uh, just going to be great to get outdoors and enjoy it as we get into this weekend. For right now, we're going to take a look out there on the road, see how things are uh, moving along. And here's I-380 at 32nd Street Northeast. Looks like uh, somebody is out on the side of the road there on the right-hand side of your screen and doesn't seem to be causing too many issues out on the roads that way. Things seem to be moving along okay. Did get a report on Waze, though, uh, near Hiawatha. It just looks like north of exit 22 and between 22 and 23, north of Glass Road, northeast, that there was a crash near Hiawatha there. But Waze is not reporting that traffic has slowed down at all. So not seeing any issues in that respect. But otherwise, across the rest of the area, things are looking fine. All in the green should not have any other issues as you're heading out the door. Janae? Thanks, Rebecca. It's now 649 on this Thursday morning. When we come back, they say every bride is different. We're going to introduce you to one who got married to herself. Seven fifty two on Fox 28. If the secret to a happy marriage is finding the right person, we can all just stop looking now, at least according to Sologamous. They're part of a growing relationship trend in which people are trying are tying the knot to themselves. Yeah. Li Zhang reports from Brooklyn, New York. 
In many ways, Erica Anderson was a traditional bride. <laughs> the 37-year-old from Brooklyn planned a formal ceremony with a white dress, flower bouquet, and walked down the aisle. Only no one was waiting for her, and that was just the way she wanted it. How would you describe self-marriage? I would describe it as women saying yes to themselves. And what does that mean? It means that we are enough even if we're not partnered with someone else. Anderson says she grew tired of people asking why she was still single. So in front of her friends and family, she married herself. I choose you today. Self-marriage or sologamy is growing, partly because it's popping up in pop culture. Like when an episode of Sex in the City floated the idea. Hi, it's Carrie Bradshaw. I wanted to let you know that I'm getting married to myself. The movement has gone global and companies are trying to capitalize. Marry Yourself in Canada offers consulting and wedding photography. Here are the preparation cards. San Francisco's Jeffrey Levine started a website called imarriedme.com. There you'll find sologamy ceremony kits that include a wedding band, daily affirmation cards, and vows. It's something that's becoming more and more understood and more and more accepted. It's not just something that's a phase or a fad. Anderson married herself to celebrate independence and believes others should too because... You're worth it. Weijia Jang, CBS News, Brooklyn, New York. So I fully get the concept of it. I completely get it and I completely appreciate and really like the you're enough, love yourself, you don't need anyone else. But what if you end up like actually falling in love later? Can you yeah. not get married then? I'm sure you can. Like, but like morally, like inside yourself, like is there, I don't, it's just really interesting Would you to divorce me. yourself? Ex <laughs> and that's rude. <laughs> <laughs> Would yourself ever forgive you? Exactly. Not like it's sure. just really complicated, and I don't know what to think about all of this. Well, it's so you don't have to marry yourself. I then. don't. I mean, it, it sounds like I can't even handle myself. So, <laughs> yep. Well, it's seven fifty five. Thanks me. for choosing Fox Twenty Eight Morning Live to start your day. We will look at the forecast and once again uh, right after this. We are three minutes away from 8 o'clock and temperatures are in the 50s right now. It's a 55, Cedar Rapids 59, Iowa City and down in Washington. Everybody's going to be climbing through the 50s this morning, close to 60 by noontime, mid to upper 60s for highs and we'll see some clearing skies. We will see some sunshine today as you get into this weekend for Mother's Day. Beautiful weather, B-E-A-U-tiful. 70s on tomorrow, seven, mid 70s on Saturday. Close to 80 Sunday, 80s Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I mean, like, what? What more could you ask for? What more for? could you ask for? And it's dry except for Tuesday. We'll have the chance for a few showers and storms. But otherwise, like, a bunch of sunshine's coming. Yeah. Some really nice weather. If you're planning anything for your mom, try to do it outside so you guys can all enjoy it. And remember together. to get a gift. Yeah, get a gift. Get her flowers. Even if you can't afford a gift, give her a giant hug and maybe a personalized card that you can draw yourself or something. Mom loves everything, right? 758. Have a great day.